Hi, good day everyone. This is a video for e-convergence and the title of our video is Implementation of ICT in TVET Teaching and Learning. We shall start with the definition of TVET. TVET stands for Technical and Vocational Education Training. It is simply a workforce training that includes all program and courses that contributes towards the development of the knowledge, technical skills, attitude and core skills essential to be competitive in the world of work. A quality TVET program plays an essential role in promoting a country's economic growth. In addition, according to Malaysia's Blue Ocean Strategy, TVET has been regarded as the main route in providing highly skilled human capital towards Malaysia's economic transformation by 2020. We shall now continue with the TVET providers in Malaysia. There are numerous TVET providers in Malaysia. The government is the main provider, having several ministries and agencies involving. These are Ministry of Education, Ministry of Human Resource and Development, Ministry of Youth and Sports, Ministry of Community Development, State Governments and Private TVET Providers. Well, before going into the implementation of ICT, we shall see what is the current TVET teaching and learning practices. The current TVET teaching and learning practices emphasize on the supply-driven approach, whereby the students are trained for specific employment. The TVET institution provides in-service training, which only applies to a certain region. Not only that, the teaching and learning process focuses on the lecturers or trainers. In brief, TVET teaching and learning practice in Malaysia separates education and training. So, what is the gap in the current practice? It is suggested that the actual practice should search for demand-driven approaches. The students should not be trained for employment, but they should learn for employability. TVET teaching and learning practices should emphasize on the concept of continuing lifelong learning. It should be self-learning and focuses on the students instead of the lecturers. Overall, a good TVET teaching and learning practice should integrate education and training, and the researchers believe that this gap can be reduced by using ICT. Now, we shall discuss on how ICT can help to bridge this gap. ICT can remove the distance and making knowledge more accessible to all. The application of ICT can be defined as the array of hardware and software that includes computer-based training systems, multimedia systems, electronic performance support system, telecommunication systems, as well as the internet. ICT can enhance teaching and learning. It has the potential to be cost-effective as it offers greater flexibility regarding time and location of training delivery. ICT also provides a path to adapt teaching and learning to meet learners' cognitive and learning styles. Although ICT is by far the most significant element undergrinding the foundation of TVET, there is a paucity regarding its implementation and use in TVET teaching and learning. The researchers have suggested that ICT is an emerging force that has the potential to transform technical and vocational education. ICT has a crucial role in expanding access, improving quality and enhancing the relevance of TVET with multimedia, online learning, mobile technology, massive open online courses and open educational resources. The implementation of ICT in TVET teaching and learning can be applied namely as curriculum, as a delivery mechanism, as a complement to face-to-face -face instruction and as an instructional tool. ICT can also be used to teach practical skills for workplace training, for recognition and it also offers virtual internship. Let us discuss the brief description of each approach. Firstly, ICT as curriculum. When using ICT as curriculum, the focus is on developing ICT literacy skills. There are two types of ICT literacy skill sets. The first is generic, such as keyboarding, word processing, using databases, using spreadsheets, desktop publishing, and using the internet for research and telecommunication. 
The second ICT skill sets are the occupationally specific skills. Examples of these skills include the ability to use CNC equipment, work with CAD, CAM, and operate equipment with digital system control. Secondly, ICT as delivery mechanism. Common approaches in current use includes computer-assisted instruction, computer-based instruction, and web-based or online instruction. The third one is ICT as a complement to face-to-face -face instruction. When ICT is used to complement instruction, the emphasis is on providing opportunities to practice skills and extending learning by working with a specific software application. In its simplest form, ICT can be used for drill and practice to complement instruction. Fourthly, ICT as an instructional tool. ICT can be used as productivity software, word processing, integrated software, spreadsheet, database, graphics application, presentation software, desktop publishing, discipline specified program, simulation and authoring software. In addition, ICT can also be used to teach practical skills. Researchers suggested that video, interactive multimedia and online learning can be used to teach practical skills. Others are stimulators and virtual reality. Moreover, ICT can be used for workplace training. Trends indicate that employers are increasingly embracing e-learning solutions to meet this growing requirement for workplace training. It is found that the two most important incentives for integrating e-learning for workplace training were reduced cost and increased flexibility. Furthermore, ICT can also be used for recognition. Training institutions and employees from other countries failed to recognize Tibet graduates outside their own country. ICT bridges the gap by allowing Tibet graduates to get recognition for the skills and knowledge they have required. By giving equal value to comparable learning and skills, they are able to work in any country. Last but not least, ICT offers virtual internship. Learners may experience difficulties in locating a suitable internship site. It is also very costly to sponsor international internships that give students international work experience. In order to address this shortcoming, ICT can be used to support a system of virtual internship. This virtual internship is where the Tibet learners interact with each other and with companies independent of time and space and across traditional geographical boundaries. So now we have come to the final section on how to implement ICT in Tibet teaching and learning. This section addresses necessary planning for integrating ICT in Tibet teaching and learning. Firstly, by governing policies to integrate ICT in Tibet teaching and learning. Secondly, by developing a comprehensive planning model for integrating ICT in Tibet teaching and learning. Thirdly, by implementing development testing of ICT-mediated Tibet teaching and learning material. Fourthly, by having expert evaluation and revision on the implementation of ICT in Tibet teaching and learning strategies. And finally, by integrating open and distance learning. With that, I shall wrap up the session. I hope that our brief discussion in this video could provide a new insight on the implementation of ICT in Tibet teaching and learning. I am Subhashini Anamalai. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.